Okay, this is a supplemental lecture to go along with uh, things that are in section or module 1.2 of your curriculum entitled Network Components. Um, in particular, I think all of these would match up with 1.2.4 intermediary devices. So the purpose of this is to give you a little more information about them as well as tell you how they came into being and, and help with understanding the function. So the first thing that the book doesn't talk about, and this is really old, uh, I don't even know if they sell these anymore, but, but the concept of a repeater. And basically, the reason we have uh, repeaters is because the maximum segment of a network, if we're talking about Ethernet, is 100 meters, so a little bit over 300 feet. And the problem is, what if you need a connection that's longer than the 100 meters? Um, so what you do is you extend the length of the network by adding a repeater. So you would have something like this. You would connect up to the repeater, and then on the other side, um, you would have another network segment. So um, a repeater is an electrical thing. That is, it doesn't understand digital zeros and ones and that type of thing. It just sees an a electrical signal, and it regenerates that signal on the other side. So if we represent this as a full strength, 5 volt or whatever, um, digital one. Uh, what happens is as that travels down uh, this segment of the network, that strength degrades. And this is something really important and probably something you'll have on your midterm exam, which is what is this called? And it is called attenuation, the fact that the signal gets smaller as it travels. And then I'll often ask what causes attenuation and the correct answer is resistance. That is, copper is a good conductor, but not a perfect conductor. So as it travels, it gets smaller. And if we go too much past that 100 meter length, that signal will get so small that either the, the device can't read it or it might interpret it as a zero when indeed it was, or in reality, it was supposed to be a one. So what the repeater does is when it sees that, like I said, it regenerates and retransmits so it would send it out the other side for it to travel down uh, that network segment. Um, so that, that kind of tells you about attenuation and, and retransmission, that type of thing. So if repeaters are super obsolete, uh, why do I talk about them? Well, they're pretty easy to understand. And more importantly, it allows me to turn around and say a hub is a multi-port repeater. So basically what happens is if an electrical signal comes in on one of these ports, it is regenerated and transmitted out all the other ports uh, so that it's at full strength again. So that's why I talk about repeaters. Now, next thing we're going to talk about is bridges. So the main function or purpose of a bridge is to connect two different networks. So when we have a picture of a network cloud, like we have two of them here, that basically means there's some computer networking stuff in there. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter exactly what's in there. Um, in this case, for this discussion, I have three, let's say, computers. Uh, three on the left cloud and three in the right cloud. Now, bridges maintain something called a bridge table. And basically the purpose of the bridge table is to um, determine or list or record what device is on which side of the bridge. So if we kind of go through a, a little scenario here, and we first say device A wants to send a packet to device B. So everybody in the cloud on the left is on the same LAN. So it's all going to see these packets. And what computers do is if the packet is destined for them, they grab the packet and pass it up the networking stack. If it is not destined for them, they just ignore it. So B will see it and say, hey, this is for me. C will see it and say, oh, this is not for me. I can just ignore it. 
Now the bridge, not knowing where A and B are yet, will retransmit it out the other side into the cloud on the right. So D, E, and F will all see that packet and say, oh, that's not for me. Well, since the bridge did see packet A, I'm sorry, a packet from device A, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to say, okay, A is on the left side of me. And then if we assume that device B responds back to device A, it's going to send a packet. Um, device A will see that packet and say, hey, that's for me, and process it. Device C will see it and say, hey, that's not for me, I'm going to ignore it. The bridge will see it and say, A is on the same side, so I don't need to send it to the cloud to the right because I know A is in the cloud on the left. Um, if we have another situation, uh, well, B sent a packet, the bridge saw it, so it now knows B is on the left side as well. Um, if device F is going to send a packet to device D, uh, D will see it and say, hey, it's for me, I'm going to process that packet. E will see it and say, hey, it's not for me, I'm going to ignore it. The bridge will see it and say, I do not know where D is yet, so I'm going to have to retransmit this out my left side. A, B, and C will all see the packet and say, hey, it's not for me, I'm going to ignore it. Uh, but since the bridge does know where D is now, um, or uh, okay, I said device F sends it. So now that it knows where F is, it's going to record that into the bridge table. Uh, now then, what happens is these as these machines communicate with each other, the bridge table will come what we call completely populated. And what completely populated means is it knows where all the, the devices are. Uh, so now it minimizes extraneous traffic by if two devices in the same cloud are communicating with each other, the bridge does not pass the traffic over to the other cloud. Uh, so this cuts down on the number of packets that are traveling over a local area network. Only the necessary local area network uh, will see uh, the traffic. Now if B is sending to D, then yes, it, it does have to go from the left cloud to the right cloud and all six hosts in this example uh, see it. So that's what a, a bridge does and the concept of a bridge table is really important. But what this allows me to do is we switches is a very important thing. It allows me to turn around and say, hey, a switch is a multi-port bridge. So what happens is on each of these interfaces um, where the cables plug in, um, it keeps track of what machines are connected to the port. A lot of times it's just a single machine, but if we come out of that port and go to a hub or a switch and then have multiple machines, um, it will have what's called a MAC address table for each port and it will keep track of what machines are there. So if it knows where a host is, it will only send it out the one interface uh, that it needs to, to go to. Now, if it gets a packet destined for a host that it does not know where it is, um, it does something called flooding, which is sending the packet out every other single interface um, so that it does make it to its final destination. Uh, but again, when the switch MAC address tables for all the ports are fully populated, it will truly only send the packet out the port it needs to to make it to its um, destination. So like I said, I just wanted to give you a little more information on um, really um, switches and um, uh, rep uh, switches and hubs and um, that, that type of thing. Uh, so hopefully that's given you a little more insight and given you some information and terminology that you'll need to know down the road.